Welcome back. All right, so we're going to do a bit of a retrospective here. During the playoffs, there's been a lot of, well, who's this guy cheer for? Why? And this is just, he's clearly against him. He really hates, he's so mad right now. And the reality is, a lot of the time when the channel thinks I'm really angry, I, I, might, I might be mad about a result. But I always keep the big picture in mind. And it's something that started as far back as 2016, where this became a hockey channel and I started making hockey videos daily. Uh, this was around the same time that I met my lovely wife, Yvonne. We got married in the summer of 2017. It was great. And the 2016-2017 season was big. That was where the channel really blew up. And the summer of 2017, uh, there was a YouTube Creators Day in Vancouver that I attended. And the, the, the little hints they gave me and the little ideas they gave me really helped to push this channel uh, to the point where I could actually make this my full-time job and my focus on the daily. So 2016, 2017, and I'm going through certain stories that I feel like helped to boost the, the, the channel and its growth along the way. And Matthew's rookie season timed perfectly with the channel's creation. And honestly, right out of the gate, he had the four goals in that first game. And right away, Matthew's is the talk of the league. He has 40 goals as a rookie, and they were an unexpected playoff team. What's well, not recalled a lot now as it was 2017, but the Leafs weren't expected to necessarily be a playoff team in 2016, 2017, because they'd been the worst team in the league the year before. There was a lot of young guys and the idea was, well, it's going to take them all to learn how to win. Or as I put it, they just, they weren't, they didn't realize they were supposed to lose. Nobody told them they were supposed to be bad. And so they made the playoffs and that was kind of fun. And again, really, you know, helped the growth of the channel initially. And then of course, during the 2017 playoff run, the Nashville Predators, or what it's remembered for is Pekka Rene is just too good right now. And the Preds go all the way to the final. I was really rooting for Nashville in the final, and then Pittsburgh sweeps them aside in six because that's what they do. And sweep, I don't mean like the sweep of four games straight, just you you, you swept the team aside. Uh, but yeah, the, the Nashville Predators run was huge uh, to the point where somebody yelled at me, it's, this is Nashville country because I was wearing a Kings jersey out in public. It was weird. Uh, but those were the two big ones that I remember from that season. 2017-2018 really changed the game for both the National Hockey League and for myself personally. The success of the Vegas Golden Knights uh, led to me being able to afford to fly to Vegas and, and meet with subscribers and, and actually be in Vegas for a few days there. And yeah, it was a it was an amazing story. There were a lot of people who thought that Vegas was going to fail really spectacularly, and they did not. They went all the way to the Stanley Cup final, where they crossed over with the other big story from that year, which was the Washington Capitals overcoming the Penguins in round two, and then being able to win a first Stanley Cup. So this comes back to the, well, clearly he hates. Well, See, Vegas was a huge part of this channel's growth during that season. The Washington Capitals Stanley Cup win was huge. People didn't see that coming because Washington had failed spectacularly in seasons prior. So the expectations were lowered for Washington and then they won the Cup. So 2018-2019, San Jose has to be on the board for this one because of the controversies in their run to the conference final. Uh, they had the series win over Vegas, but there was the five-minute power play that people still talk about and led to the NHL change in the rules. And then there was the too many men on the ice call against Colorado. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, there were there were various reasons that people did not like uh, San Jose getting where they got or the hand pass. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it, it was definitely a controversial run, but it also generated a lot of interest, especially that Game 7 between Vegas and San Jose. That was one of the biggest videos I'd ever put out to that point. Uh, and then St. Louis had their unexpected run to the, the first Stanley Cup the team has had in their history. Long history, too. That was a lot of fun to watch. Like, no, I wasn't happy to see Boston lose in that final, but if they're going to lose in the final, I would much rather it would have been St. Louis than some of the other options that would have been out there. And it was nice to see a team win their first ever championship. I, I'm always appreciative of watching a team win their first ever championship. And the fact that it happened in back-to-back -back years, I thought was kind of nice. Uh, giving hope to other teams that hadn't won their first cup as of yet. Uh, and then the Tampa Bay Lightning, also that year, that unexpected sweep at the hands of the Columbus Blue Jackets, it was really a playoffs that everybody was talking about and garnered a lot of interest. And so, yeah, again, the, the growth on the channel is always the strongest during the playoffs anyways. Uh, outside of free agency, there's a lot of growth there too. Trade deadline, you get some, but yeah, the playoffs, 
especially when you have a playoffs where almost every favorite is out in the first round, as, as was the case in 2019, really makes people say, okay, what's going to happen? And people are more likely to watch. 2019-2020, uh, got to be the pause. The pause was was interesting because, of course, all YouTubers saw their, their income drop to very, very little. <clears throat> and again, because this had been my full-time job since near the end of the 2018 regular season, 2017-2018 season, when I realized that I was going to have to miss a bunch of playoff games or I'd have to quit my, my part-time job, that was stressful. But the channel did well, and it got me over that stress. But yeah, when the pause hit in 2020, I was right there with a lot of people. We didn't know what was going to happen. What, was the NHL going to come back? Uh, and it was gone from March until August. So this is why I don't worry as much about the off season as I used to. Because from March until August, I came up with video ideas for five months when there was no news. There was nothing happening around the National Hockey League. So <clears throat> I, I learned a lot about myself during those five months. And then we had the bubble playoffs, which are still looked back upon. People scour and, oh, that was terrible. I, I thought the NHL did the best that they could under those circumstances. And then for the 2020-2021 season, they knew they had to get back on schedule. So they had the 56-game schedule just within their own divisions. That in and of itself was a driver of traffic. And there was a lot of people who got tired of seeing the same teams over and over and over again. I'm not going to lie, I got tired of covering the exact same games from one night to the other, where sometimes I'd put the teams on the board for the for the for what was going to become the review and go, I did these games two days ago. These are the same. It's all the same. So I agree. I was glad to get back to a regular schedule after that. And then Tampa Bay repeated as Stanley Cup champions, and the internet had its meltdown over that because salary cap, salary cap, salary cap. And really, the salary cap discussions started way back in the day with Chicago, but that was the whole Patrick Kane, and then they pick up Vermette at the deadline with the money they saved with Kane being on LTIR, and then Kane's magically back for the first game of the playoffs. But Tampa Bay took that discussion and just blew that out of the water, uh, and then, then they leaned into it, right? They leaned into it like, yeah, fine, sure, okay, we're over the cap, fine, which just made people even angrier, so... Yeah, uh, Nikita Kucherov really trolled well, and yeah, fans to this day still still are going to talk about and they'll talk about that for years to come. 2021-2022, we see, of course, Colorado win their first Stanley Cup since 2001. Uh, it was a fun story because up until 2022, the argument had been Colorado can't get past the second round. They're never going to get past the second round. McKinnon can't win. Remember the one playoff there where McKinnon had points in every single playoff game except, I think, one and I saw comments of, well, you know, the reason they're out is because McKinnon's not good enough. And I was like, what? Seriously? It points in every single game except one. I I don't think he's the problem. But at any rate, they win their first Stanley Cup to this date. Well, their, their third Stanley Cup as a franchise, their first since 2001. And to this date, they haven't had another one since then. But I do think they'll get back there. I think they'll figure it out. And, of course, the Battle of Alberta took place in the 2022 playoffs, the Oilers and the Flames. The views for those videos were very, very high. And then the Oilers went to the Western Conference Final, where they lost against Colorado, which happened pretty darn quickly and definitely drove view counts down uh, as, that, as that Western Conference Final went along. 2022-2023, the record season by Boston Bruins. Uh, yeah, and then it ends in misery, because that's... That's kind of what happens when Boston finishes first overall. They did in 2019-2020 as well. Um, and so they had that 3-1 to one series lead on Florida, and then they lost uh, three straight games against Florida, uh, which was considered to be a, a huge upset at the time. And then Florida goes all the way to the Stanley Cup Final, where they met with the Vegas Golden Knights, who win their first, and again, to date, only Stanley Cup, as they got knocked out in the first round this year. But the Mark Stone controversy, huge, absolutely huge um interest in that i could have put that for this year too i absolutely could have um the mark stone stuff that will drive people to watch it and and there is a reason why i'm going through all these and then i'm going to talk about this as well so that first stanley cup for vegas vegas fans didn't care if the team was over the cap everybody else seemed to uh and then this year of course vancouver a huge driver of traffic for the channel a huge story uh, they win their division. They reach the second round. I think it was a huge success for Vancouver because they were not expected to be a playoff team this year. And if they were going to get in, they might be as a wild card, just barely. But they had a really strong first half and rode that to the division title in the second half. 
And of course, the other huge story this season is Arizona moving to Utah. After many, many years of Arizona uh, sort of being this this poor team on the ice and issues off the ice with, with ownership, which is weird because over the last few years, I think the general manager's done a good job of you know, starting the build properly. Uh, I think Utah's getting a pretty good team, but huge driver of traffic, which also is interesting because Arizona on their own doesn't usually generate much in the way of traffic. Uh, they they usually get low view counts on videos about them. Uh, but the consistent draws for the channel, and this is part of the reason why the media focuses where they do. Toronto. Toronto will always get views. And when I started the video when I started the channel and started doing the hockey videos, the idea was, you know, everybody covers certain teams way more than others. I want to cover every team. I want to cover all 30, 30 at the time, 30 teams, and cover them as equally as possible. And so occasionally a Toronto video will show up. Anytime that I do a video on Toronto, it becomes, see, he's giving in to the mainstream and da 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 and oh, the, he has to cover the Leafs. The reality is the Leafs do generate the most views. The, and, and I know it's a combination of Leaf fandom being the largest and people not liking the Leafs want to watch the video with the Leafs to talk about. Leafs suck and they shouldn't be a team. Uh, but the reality is they're a consistent draw. I get why media does what they do when it comes to Toronto stuff because it gets clicks. Uh, Montreal is a pretty consistent draw as well, although when they're out of the playoff picture, eh, not as much. Uh, then, then it's a matter of if I'm going to talk about their future and draft picks and stuff like that, Montreal fans might tune in. If I'm talking about the current team and current struggles, eh, they may not want to watch a video on that as much. Vancouver is always a consistent draw, whether it's um, that I'm overly critical, whether it's I'm overly uh, enthusiastic about the team, whatever it is. Um, my fandom of the Canucks will always draw people to that video for various reasons. And so, again, you know, I don't do as many videos on the Canucks as I could because it's not a Canucks channel. It's, an, it's a hockey channel, but I, I do talk about the Canucks a little bit more, I know, than others because I'm in the market and obviously having been my favorite team right back to 1981. There's a familiarity I have when in regards to most players who've played for the Vancouver Canucks. I'm not going to have for a lot of other teams in the league, especially the ones that have been around uh, since the 80s. Uh, I just didn't follow them as closely as the Canucks for that period of time. Edmonton will always be a draw. Again, you've got McDavid, you've got Dreisaitl, two of the biggest stars in the National Hockey League. I think if Edmonton wins the Stanley Cup, I think that will be a huge draw on both sides of the border. I think if the Oilers go to the Stanley Cup final and knock out Dallas, I think you'll see the ratings up both in the States and in Canada. Because <clears throat> I, I think that Canada's Cup drought is well known uh, on both sides of the border. Plus, McDavid is definitely a draw in terms of money. Um, and then Chicago. Chicago draws. And, and again, there's a lot of controversies around Chicago that have led to a lot of, again, just speaking from my perspective as a YouTuber, it's led to a lot of views. But views are views. And that's that's really the idea behind um, media and it's it's the damnation as well of what media has kind of become that it's about clicks rather than necessarily being about what's necessarily newsworthy and so Chicago uh, no matter what they do I know that those videos are gonna draw hits uh, Pittsburgh you've got Crosby Malkin Latang, and and just that core the fact they've won as many cups as they have uh, Pittsburgh's a draw and that it, it, it is consistent Philadelphia with John Tortorella I know if I do videos on Tortorella or on the Flyers, I know I know those those videos are going to get more views than some of the others. I think it's the Tortorella effect. Uh, he just he he draws a lot of uh, a lot of attention. Uh, he's very outspoken and he's very honest. Uh, Detroit Detroit has become a draw as well over the last couple of years. Not as much when they were at the bottom of the league, but they started drawing again. Uh, and it seems to be a split as well between the fans that are really enthusiastic about the future as well as those who want to tear down Steve Eiserman and say, ah, he's a terrible GM. Look at the horrible moves he's made. And I always look at the horrible moves and think, eh, I mean, those are iffy, but not horrible. But anyways, yeah, Detroit's a draw, and then Boston and the Rangers to round out the original six. The original six and most of the Canadian teams draw a lot of views and a lot of interest. Uh, I don't have Winnipeg and Ottawa up because there have been times where I've done videos on Winnipeg or Ottawa, and they just haven't hit. Um, and they're not as consistent, I think, as the other teams on the board here. Uh, but it's understandable. You've got a lot of history with the original six teams, right? You've got the two Pennsylvania teams. There's pretty rabid fan bases in Pennsylvania. And then you've got the Western Canadian teams, Edmonton, who are on a huge upswing. 
and Vancouver, of course, again, me being in the market and everything. Uh, Calgary would be up here too, but the view counts for them over the last couple of years haven't been that high because the team really generally hasn't been as good. I think if Calgary was in a similar position to Edmonton, I think they'd probably be on the board, but they're not right now. So there you go. And and this is something I keep in mind during playoffs. I keep thinking, all right, so the storyline now is, okay, so what's going on here is, and, you know, what's interesting with this year's playoffs is the Final Four, none of them have won a Stanley Cup in the 2000s. Um, 1999, the most recent, that was Dallas. 1990 for the, for the Edmonton Oilers. 1994 for the New York Rangers. And never for the Florida Panthers. So... We're going to get a Stanley Cup champion who hasn't won it in a while. My guess is that whoever wins it, that win's going to be absolutely huge. Should draw a lot of attention, but if it's Florida, it's going to be less attention than if it's Dallas. If it's Dallas, it'll be less attention than the Rangers. And if it's the Rangers, it'll get a little less attention than the Oilers. That's the kind of hierarchy that I've seen in terms of view counts personally. But again, I, I try not to make that change um, which videos I, I do more of. But what I do, and I'll, I'll admit this too, is that when I'm doing previews, when I'm doing like a 32-team uh, playlist, I try to make sure that if I'm doing, let's say I'm doing four videos a day uh, where I'm talking about season previews, I will try to make sure one of those four season previews is for a team that I know will generate more views than probably the other three. I try to balance it out that way. So when people are like, how is he, what order is he going in? Very often it's, okay, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to, on the first day I'm doing previews, do Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and Edmonton. Because I'm going to get huge views that day, and then nothing the rest. So I try to balance it, especially during the off season. I try to balance out the views. So I'll try to make sure, like, for instance, we're going to go on vacation. We were going to go to Vegas, now it looks like it's going to be Disneyland again. Because we've been talking to each other about it, we're kind of like, you know, at Disneyland kind of works. So... Um, for while I'm away on holiday, of course, I pre-record videos and I try to make sure there's one video per day that's going to be a, a big driver of, of traffic to the channel. Uh, and then I try to make sure that the other videos, while they're not going to be as, as well viewed, they're going to be something fun for me to talk about, something that I think people will be interested in. That's where the career videos come in. So if I'm going to do a career video during an off-season day, I want to make sure there's like a redraft in there or some kind of a top 10 ranking, some kind of list video. So it kind of balances everything out. <clears throat> and so that's that's kind of how I decide it during the off season is which one's going to draw and which one isn't. And that's very, very different than when the channel started. When the channel started, I was just a, an NHL fan who liked the Canucks, the Bruins, and the, and the Stars. Um, now I'm a guy who likes the Canucks, the Bruins, and the Stars. I also have a business that relies on me covering everything else and understanding where the traffic comes from, uh, which stories are going to draw traffic and which ones aren't. And I like to tell the stories that don't, so I want to make sure that I'm also telling the story that does draw the traffic so that the other videos are well taken care of. In fact, I, I really enjoy doing the videos on my second channel, The Entertainment Guy, probably just as much as I enjoy doing the videos here. Um, and the, the success of this main channel means I can go over to that channel and do the occasional video. And it doesn't matter if it only generates 500 views. It, it doesn't matter because uh, I know this channel's generated 50, 60,000 that day, that kind of thing. So anyways, I just wanted to, to do this retrospective and, and just, you know, this is the kind of thing I keep in, in, persp in, in my mind when the playoffs are going along. So when the Canucks get knocked out, I'm like, well... I mean, it sucks the Canucks are out, but I know the Edmonton Oilers are going to draw. I know the Oilers and the Stars should be a very in interesting series between teams that haven't played each other in a long time. Should be interesting. So that's the difference, because before I had a channel, it just would have been, well, the Canucks are out. That sucks. Oh, Dallas beats them. If not, I guess I'll just find something else to do. And I don't know if I'd be watching the Rangers-Florida series. Probably. Probably. If I didn't have a channel, I'd probably be watching it. But I don't know that I would. I, I don't know that I'd be watching every single game. I probably wouldn't be watching every night. I'd probably be watching every few nights. I'd be watching all the Oilers-Dallas games. But uh, again, it's really changed things having a channel for eight years where I, I look at hockey and talk hockey. And thankfully, there's enough people that want to hear me talk about hockey that I can continue to be here doing that. So thank you guys so much for all your support. Absolutely. From 2016 right through until now. Uh, it's been a fun ride. I'm looking forward to the day when I need like a five by three board for this 
and I'm in my 80s and talking about, remember back in 2016? Um, and everybody will be like, no, but ha somehow you do. And uh, yeah, so that's, 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 that's what I'm looking forward to at some point in time. Um, I don't think I'll ever retire. Just going to throw that out there. I don't think that'll ever happen. Not a true retirement, as it were. Um, maybe I'll be like, you know, Bob McKenzie and having my ties here and there, but I'll still be talking hockey and still doing videos because it's what I, what I enjoy doing. It's, it's the best job I've ever had. And, uh, I, I really, I keep all that in perspective, even when I'm watching teams that I root for melting down in the playoffs and losing it, It's sort of, it's a tradition, uh, since before the channel existed and it's just continued during the channel's existence. I haven't had a positive or negative in impact. Uh, on teams I root for by having a channel. Doesn't seem like it anyways. Uh, but if you're a Red Wings fan, you're like, well, what about us? Yeah, yeah, no, they haven't made the playoffs the entire time the channel's been around, neither is Buffalo. So you guys can can throw that at me. I was going to put Buffalo, too, in the consistent, but Buffalo's not as consistent with, with drawing views as I thought they would be when the channel first started up. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, again, as these playoffs roll along, it's it's always interesting to see the stories that develop. And I'm always fascinated by the stories in the hockey world that develop every year is different. And uh, this the one thing that having 28 teams out of the playoffs now and only four left is, I'm already thinking forward to next season and thinking, I, I wonder how these teams are going to do next year and uh, what kind of moves these teams are going to make from now until next season. So... I, I really do make the kind of content that I think that if I didn't have a hockey channel, I'd probably be seeking out. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for all your support, though. It does. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already hit like and subscribe, please do. I'll talk to you again soon.